A warm welcome to the small creative space of mine. A lot of things had been going on in this small space in the past couple of days. It had been really hectic over here and you could clearly see that. A fresh coat of white paint was long overdue not just for my studio space but for our whole apartment. So this has been the situation during our Eid holidays. And finally it was time to rearrange and repack all the hoarded arts and crafts supplies and the plastic bottles. I must say I am not yet done with the complete rearrangement of the studio but I am completely happy with how this white wall has turned out and is really highlighting all the artworks and has brought a fresh new life to the studio. I often get asked how I arrange and store all these plastics and my art supplies. I hope to give a decent studio tour sometime in the near future. Soon after the deep cleaning days, I got the allergic cold. So I didn't want to commit myself in any bigger projects and thought of taking it slow during the week. I had these small canvases of size 15 cm and I wanted to create something out of the discarded plastics. By discarded plastics, I didn't mean the usual textures that I use. These are the trash of the trash that I have already used. So it's kind of giving a second or third life for all these plastics. I was looking forward to create something like a crystal texture. And let's see how this collection goes. I am planning to create five small artworks which will be framed in box frames. And it is still ongoing. Do I use any specific sort of machines or tools to cut my plastics, bend them and arrange them or assemble them? These are the common questions that I get on Instagram. And the truth is, no, I don't have any machines or I don't use any special sort of machines or tools to cut all these plastics. So let me show you how I do it. I use a set of five basic tools which are my best companions while tackling all these plastics. I might not be using all these tools in every single artworks that I create but all these are the basic tools that I use in one or the other situation and comes handy in various stages of the process. Now let's get to know them one by one. This is a simple scalpel or exacto knife with, which usually comes with two different blades and is very durable. I usually use this as a beginning stage of cutting all the bottles and it can be used to create different marks in the bottles as well. It's very sharp and I can use it to create the first hole in the bottle and the cut can gradually go or proceed with the scissors. I have been using similar type of blades for most of my projects with different uh, various LDP plastics and it works well with all those surfaces. Next is another life saver, different types of scissors i have two to three favorite ones and the small one must be my favorite so for these beginning stages or for the initial cuts i use the small scissors which can be inserted in even the smaller surface or even the curved surface When it comes to bigger or wider cuts, I prefer using this large scissor. In just one or two cuts, it will create defined straight even lines. So most of my straight cuts or 
uh, plain curves will be done using this large scissor. To get more defined line or defined cut through this curved surface, it is much better to use smaller scissors. People often comment about my curves or the circles. The cut will be really smooth and that comes with practice and I don't use any other punches or machines for this cut. I just hand cut them individually using these smaller scissors. You might have noticed that most of my works has lots of these repetitive circles and I have to cut all these individually. But I really enjoy this meditative process of creating repetitive patterns. This was an interesting find. I have seen people using this long needle to stitch leather or similar surfaces and thought it might work with my plastic scraps as well. And it does. I make holes like this which will be yet another repetitive process in order to create larger sculptures. For projects or textures which demand bigger holes, I use this type of puncher. And the leftovers of all these punch holes will be added as textures in another artwork and I just love that procedure of reusing all these scraps. Next is a very useful plier. It comes handy in various situations. I like to bend all these plastic textures using plier. I can easily bend with my hands as well, but the grooves will not be sturdy or defined. With the pliers, it can make straight lines or the curves and make it more defined and it will stay bended like this. Also, it, these pliers can be used in order to create textures using the wires. As you guys know, I get inspired by all these natural textures and structures. Most of them has bends or straight lines which need to be recreated on these plastic surface. And that's when these sharp pliers comes handy and it, it won't need much exertion to create these grooves in bigger structures as i mentioned earlier i also use my pliers to bend these metal wires which i usually use to thread these plastic circles or in order to attach them to the canvas or any other background surface The options with metal wires and the pliers are endless and I could just go on and create lots of other textures using these two things. I love to explore all the options using basic materials and tools readily available around me. In that case, these different types of metal wires works magic because it works perfectly to create and recreate these repetitive patterns. So through this video, I would like to emphasize the fact that you don't need any sort of fancy tools or machines to get started with your creative journey. 
I hope you all enjoyed watching this small video and got some ideas for your creative practice as well. Take care. Bye.